first time using one of these clickers, so we'll see how this works out. My name is Taylor West. I'm one of the co-founders of Humble Sea Brewing Company. Uh, along with me, I have Frank Scott Kruger, who's also one of the co-founders, and then Nick Pavlina, who's also another one of the co-founders. We recently opened up on Swift Street. Uh, we opened up on March 17th, this last, uh, or two months ago. So it's been a pretty exciting time. So stop by if you haven't had, a, if you haven't had the chance yet. So now, regardless of what Donald Trump has to say, manufacturing jobs in the United States aren't really coming back. And since the year 2000, we've lost more than 5 million manufacturing jobs. A lot of this has to do with improvements in technology and automation. So why would we neighbor Silicon Valley in San Francisco, the automation and sort of <laughs> technology focal points of the world, do we decide to open a manufacturing business in Santa Cruz? Well, frankly, we got together, we crunched the numbers, and we realized, hey, this can be a pretty good business. So we got together, we raised over a million dollars, we, we started working with our friends and family and pulling in investments of ten, fifteen thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars twenty five thousand dollars and after the first 16 months we raised three hundred and thirty thousand dollars in a convertible note now that convertible note helped get our small manufacturing facility up and running in the santa cruz mountains up in ben Lomond. now after that we also were able to sign a lease to our current location in santa cruz we were able to put a down payment of sixty seven thousand dollars onto our brewing equipment and we we're able to sort of get the project up and running now, shortly after that, we began the bank courting process, or our banks began courting us. We got turned down by quite a few. Our bank, our bank account ran pretty low, but in September of this last year, we got an injection of $500,000 from Heritage Bank account, or from Heritage Bank of Commerce, and this was had been able to fund the remaining parts of our project. So, essentially, getting our tap room functional, getting our brew house functional, getting everything that we need, getting employees hired, now from there, it's like, cool, how did we get this project up and off the ground? Well, same thing that a lot of businesses starting out do. They apply the lean startup methodology. So we took that $330,000, we got a small manufacturing facility going up in Ben Lomond. It was at the time, it was grandma's carport. She asked us and she said, hey, how long are you guys gonna be here? We're like, oh, two to three months. She's like, cool, how much space do you need? We're like 20 square feet. 16 months later, we own the whole carport, her car's parked outside. <laughs> we got a manufacturing facility going from Ben So we were taking these small, small, small scale uh, recipes. We were running them around town. Nick would make the beer, Frank would market the beer, and I would throw it in the back of my truck and run it around town, throw it in tap, uh, throw it on tap in places like Beer 30, Weston Tap and Kitchen, Lupolo downtown, and I'd sit there in the corner and I'd watch people go up in order. Sweet, if a keg went on and it went off for five hours, I knew we had a pretty good product. If it went on and it stayed on for three weeks, back to the drawing board, we gotta make a new beer. So from there, we're also brewing on a very small system. So it was two kegs at a time. So we brew a funky beer, something like an Indian pale lager with jalapenos. It didn't turn out very well. Cool, we just dump it, no big deal. At the same time, if we hit a home run, we put a recipe up there and it's gone in a few hours. Cool, we know we're on the right track. Okay, and then from there, we also did a series of events around town. Matthew Swinnerton and then Santa Cruz, we worked with these, these guys so much. We did over 30 events in our first 16 months. So an event every two weeks, a lot because of Matthew Swinnerton. Also, we stood on the corner and we yelled at the top of our lungs about the story we had. Hey, we're a small brewery opening from the Santa Cruz Mountains. Find us on Facebook, find us on Instagram, read our blog read about our online marketing, anything to get our name out there. This right here is Grandma's Carport. So you can see how we kind of have all the barrels over in the corner. That was supposed to be our original space right there. Before you know it, we had more refrigerators in there than you know what to do with. We have a bunch of oak and we were producing enough beer to be on 10 accounts from this small little space. So from this small little space, we're also able to test 60 recipes. So back to the lean startup methodology. We are able to, to innovate brand new recipes, things that are on tap right now in our tap room, recipes that we're able to brew much larger quantities of for the time because we're able to test it in such a small, small size. Now, so we raised all this money. Sweet, what do we spend it on? Cool, you need a million dollars? What are you gonna do with that money? A bunch of 20 year olds walking around with a million dollars in their pocket, what do you think they're gonna do? 
So in this case, we took $300,000 and we got the best brewing equipment we could possibly get our hands on. Because when you're crafting a product, the equipment that you're making the products with really is the ultimate factor. Then we took $400,000, we started investing that into the building, we removed walls, we added in floor drains, we painted the building, we bought a panini press, we did a lot of really cool stuff. <laughs> we took the other $130,000, we did that in experimentations with beer. And if you look at our tagline, one of the taglines that we have, it's experiments in beer, because we're gonna go out there, we're gonna make a lot of different styles of beer, things you maybe never heard of before, things you never had an opportunity to try before, and we're gonna see if it sticks. Essentially, we're gonna grab a bunch of stuff, throw it up against the wall, and find out what people like to drink. Now, part of that four or $300,000 got us this shiny piece of stainless steel. And this shiny piece of stainless steel is actually sitting in our brew house right now. It's still non-operational, but it's sitting there. So we get to look at it, and we get the dream. So $300,000, wanna see what it looks like in stainless steel? There it is. Okay, part of also being on a lean budget, okay, is when this stuff shows up, you gotta be able to figure out how to unload it. So, for example, this is one of our fermenters, it's $15,000, these things are super sensitive. You drop one of them, you have a $15,000 worth of scrap metal. Not very functional. So in this case, we're able to buy our forklifts, we grab our neighbor and say, hey, come on over, bring your forklifts, it'll be a simple day, it'll take five minutes, we're gonna, we're gonna unload some equipment. Eight hours later, <laughs> We're finally getting these things off and we're getting them into, uh, into our space. But it, this is our finished project. This is our tap room. And if you look over in the far corner, you can see a small little sign. It says maximum occupancy, 25 people. So you invest a million dollars, you spend $400,000 on a build out, and you get 25 seats. <laughs> so it really makes a lot of sense. But I tell you what, it's a nice place to come and hang out and grab a couple beers. So let's do the cost breakdown. Okay, cool. These guys spent a million dollars. They're in their mid-20s. They got a bunch of equipment. They soaked $400,000 in into a building they can't take with them. Why does this make any sense? Well, once the brewing equipment is up and running, we're able to craft a beer for right around $3,000. And now that incorporates ingredients. That includes rent. That includes water, utilities, everything you need to make the beer. Now we let that beer hang out for a couple weeks. We let it mature, and then we pump it through one wall into our tap room. And from there, we serve it in five ounce, 12 ounce, eight ounce sizes. And at the end of the day, after we produce 300 gallons, we can turn around and sell that 300 gallons for $18,000. So back to doing basic math, we got a pretty good, pretty good little profit margin right there. Now our plan is to take this money that we make and reinvest it back into the brewery. We wanna help scale this business. We wanna, we wanna grow this business to be, you know, to be something that we really can look back on and be thankful for and be very happy that we, we had the chance to do this. Now much like wine, now much like wine is the Napa, we want to make Santa Cruz the next major craft beer hub. So that means that means contributing to a mature market, not a saturated market. So we need more places like ourselves to start opening up here in Santa Cruz. So that way when people think of Santa Cruz, they think surfing, they think the beach boardwalk, and then they also think craft beer. And that's how it's going to help get us some notoriety. That's how it's going to bring the other craft breweries to light here in Santa Cruz. Now also, we do this because we like having a good time. <laughs> and at the end of the day, if this photo is actually Frank strangling Nick and Nick punching me in the face and me rolling around on the ground crying because I'm so upset that we know that it's time to sort of cut tail and move on to something else. Now typically, this is the time where I sit down, or excuse me, this is, the, this is typically the time where I give you my best elevator pitch, my best Chris Saka impersonation, but instead, we're gonna take 15 seconds and we're gonna look at one of our bartenders holding a pygmy goat. <laughs> awesome, thanks guys, we got beer over there, we got an email list, questions. Yeah, so it was actually our home brewer, or the head brewer, he started brewing under Humble Sea nine years ago, and uh, he was at the time he was living in Pleasure Point, and if you ever have a conversation with him, you ever interact with him, it's usually pretty brief. You know, <laughs> you, you ask him something like, hey man, how's your beer? He goes, that's pretty good. And you're like, cool, tell me about it. You're like, that's beer. 
So when we were discussing names for the business, the name Humble Seed just fit very well. We decided to move forward with it. Yeah, I'm sure there is business, or there is real estate we could buy in Santa Cruz. Um, we don't own that piece of property. Ideally, it would be great if we could buy that piece of property, but... But there is stuff out there you could buy. We're gonna have to sell a lot of beer. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so, one day soon. Expensive too. Yeah, yeah, come in, buy a bunch of pints, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Guys, anything, anything else? Are you in retail yet, beyond your... Yeah, that's a good question. So we actually started off by wholesaling our beer. That was our, you know, we did wholesale before opening a retail location. Um, in this case, we actually had to pull all of our wholesale accounts and we only have our storefront. Uh, one day soon, hopefully within the next couple months, we'll begin, hope we'll begin wholesaling again. It's gonna take some time. Uh, right now, we're actually in a beer shortage. We're having sort of a, a beer problems, uh, the, which is a good problem and it's a great problem to have. But the, the beautiful stainless steel equipment we showed isn't hooked up yet, so we're having to find creative ways to make enough beer. And two weeks after opening, we almost ran out of beer, and you know we're a brewery with no beer. I don't really understand how that works. Yeah. So yes, sir. Did you have any? Uh, was there any challenges in scaling from those small batches to the larger batch? Did things change unexpectedly? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, there, there, there has been uh, some slight issues. We're actually just getting into that right now. So our first batches on a, on a larger system are starting to come out. I know efficiency efficiency is typically like a big issue. Um, we're just gonna have to figure that out as we start making more beer. So what's with that equipment? Do you need a permit or something? No, actually we have all the permits necessary. In this case, and not to give you guys a sob story, but we're waiting on a PG&E power upgrade and uh, we've been waiting for 15 months now. That timeline has actually been extended to the end of July, um, and every single time our deadline comes up, they just extend it back again. So if you guys know anyone at PG&E, you, you get on the phone and be like, hey, those guys at Humble C are okay. We need to get them more power. So that's the big thing we're waiting on right now, it's just a power upgrade. Um, our equipment can't run without, uh, without the power. And if you actually notice, if you're hanging out in the tap room, we run our dishwasher, all the lights dim, <laughs> because we're using all the power in our entire place. David Dennis. What are you guys doing for our first Friday Cinco de Mayo this week? Uh, we are doing a, a double beer release. So we will have a, an Imperial Stout, um, aged in our Venus, uh, Venus whiskey barrels. We're gonna release that. And we're also gonna, gonna have a new sour release from our barrel program. So those two things are coming out. David Dennis. Uh, no. No, 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 we will, we will, we will, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll have the Reuben, the Italiano, pimento grilled cheese, that's it. Yeah, Cubano, that's our menu, guys, super simple. All right, thank you so much. So if you have any more questions,